How's it going ladies and bruises? I'm Bobby Sixkin. Welcome back to Pyre. Now it is nearly time for another liberation, right? We are on our way up Mount Elodial once again, so we are just going to seek the Worm Scribe's favour. Later that afternoon you accompanied Tizo through the fading glory of the Temple Cistern to the monument of Underking Horus. Hello again old friend. I know that you and all the scribes are watching over me, and all of us, and I am grateful to you. Your ancient rites are ending soon. I promise you my friends I will make the most of our last two chances here. Two chances! Now we know! You return to the wagon after he has finished paying his respects. The summit awaits, but first there is time to continue practicing your vocations. Nice. Plus three glory. Okay. Should I max out Jadaria? To make sure that she can go? I don't know. I don't know what to do. She should be able to be enlightened enough to go, right? I just don't know. Let's hit Volfred. I want to get rid of Volfred. I should be interested to see which lessons you have taken from the book. You and Volfred spend some time reviewing some of the specific aspects of the rites, such as the properties of the aura. You sense he has gained something from it. For that, you don't get a bonus on that, with inspiration. Well observed, I have to say, my boy. Interesting. You have someone to talk to in the black wagon? These are. Jizo seems to be in the midst of conversation with the low minstrel as you approach the two of them. The little imp, imp appears perturbed about something. And above all, he was very, very loyal. Fiercely so, in fact. And all throughout the land knew better than to underestimate him in spite of his little stature. In that respect, Tizo, and in many others I might add, your great-grandfather was very much like you. Jizo seems to be asking the low minstrel to confirm he's not playing some sort of prank. I am being serious. Have you known me to be the jesting sort? Tizo seems to be admitting the lone minstrel has always been sincere with him. Just so then. Please do not denigrate yourself. You are not only his heir, but you are my remaining link to him, and thus, to all the eight. And more importantly, you are my friend. Tizo is grateful to the lone minstrel for his kind words and considers him a friend as well. The Nightwings need you now more than ever so. Then the lone minstrel turns to you. Is that not so, Rita? Heartily concur. You concur with the Lone Minstrel's assessment of Tizo. As a most remarkable and irreplaceable member of the group, he is an extraordinary imp indeed. At this, Tizo rushes up to you and gives you a, an imp hug. <laughs> Tizo is grateful to you for your kindness and your support of him. Tizo bounds off happily as the Lone Minstrel looks on. And there he goes. Thank you indeed, reader. Tizo sometimes loses sight of all things that make him special, a quality uncharacteristic of his kind, but not so much uncommon among yours. Once there was a time when he was the sole imp able to conduct the rites. Since then, however, other triumvirates have found imps with the capacity for it. They make for useful allies, no? More than willing to conduct the rites whilst having no desire to leave this place. Although little Tizo does have dreams of visiting the Commonwealth. In any case, I'm certain he shall continue to serve the Nightwings faithfully. The low minstrel bows his head on the way out, bidding you a good rest of the afternoon. Plus one hope. And Tizo's all ramped up for the next one, then. Because he got like plus four hope from um, the prey, the praying. A messenger imp somehow tracks you down in the ancient formations of Mandalodial and delivers you recent news and rumors from the other side. Specifically, the imp shares details regarding Pamitha and what became of her since she was liberated at the fall of Salaam. She found herself back in the homeland of her enemies where, despite her connection to the Highwing remnants, her past transgressions were forgiven. In fact, she was asked to join the military council given her unique background. Yet she refused to cooperate and instead demanded to be reunited with her sister, Tamitha. But when they threatened her with resentencing to exile, they insisted that she take the opportunity. Pamitha said at last she would think it over and return with the decision soon. Next she was seen, however, she was among Volfred's sons and daughters of the Revolution. Ruta says she attached her loyalty, at least for the time. He thanked the imp for bringing this news, which soon gets your companions talking. Never once before has this knight ever felt a thing for our most bitter enemies, and yet, and yet, having known Pamitha proved eye-opening indeed for this night. Tizo wishes for Pamitha to find her way and her sister in the Commonwealth. We suspect the ancient enmity between the winged and the flightless shall not be soon resolved, if ever at all. I hold to hope that both the Thane sisters one day shall s join together as part of our good cause. The two of them can help us lead, lead us towards a brighter future. 
It seems to me the little bird is no more free than she was when she was here. In spite of some mixed feelings, the news of Pamitha's liberation fills you and your fellow exiles with resolve. Plus one hope. I'm getting a lot of bonuses right now. Like a lot. That could help out, because I feel like the next one's going to be fucking hard. You will return once more to Scribe's Gate, where the Gate Guardian awaits under a dim sky. The exiles of the Nightwings are new to Reek. This is to be one of our final meetings. Greetings, Celeste. The Nightwings are prepared, and afterwards, I would have words with you in private, if you please. It seems to me rather late for words now, Tariq, but I shall hear them once your charge cross the gate. Now all of you, come forth. Please state your names and what it is you seek whilst crossing Scribe's Gate. Once more your companions cross the gate, one after another, and once more you follow them in turn. Celeste regards you all and waves you through towards the summit. The eight scribes bid the Nightwings welcome, go forth with glory. And Tariq? Bye, Celeste. You may rejoin the others in a while, for now I would hear those words of yours. Certainly, Celeste. Everyone, I shall see you shortly. Oh, we don't get to see what he's talking about? Damn. It's probably important. They obviously have a lot of history, those two. Here we go. The time has come again to deliver one of your fellow exiles to a homecoming in the Commonwealth. Lest your adversaries, the dissidents, achieve the same instead. The low minister was returned and approaches you. It approaches as you await the signal from the stars. There is something I wish to ask you, reader. Something which ordinarily would not be my place to discuss in any detail. You have observed the stars. If you would not mind my asking you in such a direct manner, how many liberation rights are you supposing yet remain? Two remain, including this one now. That's what I think now. You tell him the only logical deduction which you've been able to make based on all of your readings and the stars of late. That there should be one final liberation right after tonight. I concur with your evaluation, reader, sir. I wish to make certain that you are aware, so that you and the Nightwings may yet make the most of your remaining time together with us. As to what shall happen once the final liberation right is ended, we soon shall both find out. But lo, it seems we are called upon once more. Look forth! Here we go. We can't afford to lose any more rights. That one was bad enough. We've already got a 75% success chance at the moment. We need to buff, buff that up a lot. Somehow. Hopefully Jadariel can go. When you first looked upon the Book of Rights, think back upon the words that it revealed. Oblige the voice that tells you more. Oblige the voice that tells you more. Would that the scribes were here among us still. I would not sing your praises to them, rest assured. I trust that you shall savor this occasion. You shan't have to oblige me for much longer. Dude, he's such a whiny bitch. The pyres burn and each of the triumvirates is present and prepared. I concur, the pyres burn and each of the triumvirates is present and prepared. Then anointed one of the dissidents come forth now and declare yourself and pay any respects you have unto your adversaries, the Nightwings. Barker bursts out from some hidden corner laughing as he pours at his mask. I love Barker. A real pleasure to be here, mates, truly. Barker Ashpaws, call me Barker though, alright? By the by, it was a real pisser getting here, you know? Begging your pardon, Barker Ashpaws? You thusly speak upon the summit of the Sacred Mountain? Oh my, so terribly sorry to offend you there, lassie. I forgot we got the stars up above there to make me watch me language. Though, let's get one thing straight, lassie. I don't give a bother for you or your Sacred Mountain, so you take it and you shove it. Me and my pack, we're just here for laughs, you got that? The other side ain't any better than this one. We're interested in your freedom. But just the same, we're gonna get it. Take it from those wee little babies there, so antsy for it. Hear that, you Nightwings? You better put up a good fight here, or I ain't gonna be happy, understand? He shoves his mask back on. Right, come on then. Let's hurry up and get this damn thing started. Fuck is so cool. I almost hope he gets free. Nightwings, your choice. In whose name shall you conduct this liberation right? I wish you the wisdom of the scribes in making your choice, reader. And I wish you to come prepare our song with me, Tariq. Shall you attempt to send home this time? Jadariel. Jodariel. Keep that evil room 
if that is your wish. Who shall strive for her? Sir Gilman. By your grace, Master Reader. <laughs> I love how he says that. Bertrude. For that one, and for the reading one, we shall do this. Alright then, mates, no more waiting. No more holding back. Let's rip them to shreds. Let's go, let's go, let's go! <laughs> Fuck, they're crazy. Fuck, that's not good. Yep, that's not good. They're so fast. Go, Gilman. Fuck, he's a fucking... Such a fast little motherfucker. What in the... Alright, mate, something's gone right funny with that orb, as I can tell. Better laugh it up while I still can, eh? Indeed, something strange seems to have happened to the Celestial Orb. It shudders now as though possessed of some chaotic power as your adversaries. Around the outside. There we go. I wish Gilman hit a bit harder. That's his only downside. Whoa! Fuck! <laughs> he just stands there at the edge. What you gonna do, huh? <laughs> Fuck you. No! Go, Bertrude, go! There we go. Oh, this is a risky one. They're all risky ones now, I suppose. Ha! Gilman, too good. You got one more shot left in you, son. Done. Thank you. As for their adversaries, they did not. Thus ends the liberation right. And thus the scribes have chosen the exile appointed by the Nightwings shall be free. Absolved of all misdeeds, return to glory in the Commonwealth. Her adversary and all others shall remain to carry out their rightful sentences. What a joke. Here I was thinking we were going to make him cry after all this. Come on, mates. I've right had it with a stuck-up place. So let's get out of here already, eh? I love you, Barker. You're the best. <laughs> I wish he was on my side. After all this time, she turns her gaze towards the rest of you. I never thought this day would come. I have all of you to thank for this, for doing this for me. The life that I recall back in the Commonwealth was at times difficult, and I am much older now. I know not what I shall find on my return. However, I know this. If that place still is like the Commonwealth I left so long ago, then I shall strive to make it better for as long as I retain my strength and breath. You see her smile faintly as she disappears into the shimmer pool. Though you can still hear her voice, though faintly now. Farewell then, reader. All of you, for now. Earn back your freedom. Captain of Jordaniel. The cycle of the rites is nearly at an end. Bye, Jodariel.
Our group's getting pretty small. Maxed out. Long have we sought to fathom all the darkest secrets hidden by the light of the stars. Now at last the stars themselves revoke their station in the night, and we finally achieve an inkling of this. Alright. While Bertrand's Pyre has less, they do negative 10 damage. That's pretty good. Let's take that. If the last one is... If the next Liberation Rite is the very last one, I think it's only right to let Gilman go for that one. Because he has done all the work to get us this far. You prevailed in the Liberation against the Dissidents. Already does the Black Wagon feel quieter than usual without Jadariel, who returned to the Commonwealth. You overhear some of your companions reflecting on this. With whom shall this knight regularly spar if not with Jadariel? I'm sure you said that about Hedwood. We shall make do without her here. You wonder who, if anyone among you, shall be the next to go. The last light of the stars still shines for us above. At this point, what is to become of our plan needn't be the subject of our speculation. I trust that we'll learn the outcome soon enough. Our actions to this point shall pave the way, perhaps our faith as well. So let's for now focus on this. We stand upon the brink of the last turn of the cycle of the rites. Soon we shall have a final chance to get one of you home. Now, reader, up for a little stargazing. Let's see where the downside, in the downside, we shall be returning for these final rites. You turn back toward the darkness to look upon the last few stars, too stubborn to relinquish their light. But yeah, I definitely think it should be should be Gilman that gets to go home now. After everything he's done for us. He's been max level forever. And seeing we don't need him anymore, because we won't be doing any more rights, we can let him go. He certainly earned it. The withdrawn, or the fate, or the chastity. Ah, oh, fuck. Can we look at his planner? Who's at the top? The accusers are going to be next no matter what, so it doesn't matter. We'll just pick the easiest one, I guess. The fate. It's our best shot. Once more, you are to face the fate then. Although I wonder... He hesitates before saying anything further. You cannot sense his thoughts. I apologize. I was lost in thought there for a moment. Let us make the make way for the Ridge of Gold, where everyone is feeling more refreshed as much as possible. Who wants to talk? Tariq. Following Jadariel's liberation, the Lone Minister has returned to the wagon and stands as though nothing has happened here this night. He tilts his head a bit as you approach. Once more, the Nightwings have prevailed in the liberation right under your mindfulness, reader. A commendable achievement. Surely Jadariel shall live out her days in gratitude to you and your companions. Perhaps you may now seek Hedwin there, in your commonwealth. I should think Hedwin would like, would have liked to witness what took place this night. I trust that together, they shall make a formidable difference to the plan which all of you endeavoured to achieve. Now for the time, Celeste and I are to return to our respective stations. We all await the next turn of the cycle of the rites. May you prevail once more when we next traverse Scribescape. Until then, reader, rest well under the stars. He nods and leaves you to recover after a long night. Alright, here we go. It is daybreak. You are set to set forth now for the Ridge of Gull. For what appears to be the final time. Thereafter you shall return here for one last exile's final chance at liberty. Alright, here we go. This is it. The end. We finally made it. This game's a lot longer than all the other games made by Supergiant Games. Your flight takes you near to where you breached past Stormwall into Deathless Tempest. With the climate and the downside intensifying, you wonder if the storm has spilled forth from its confines and started to ravage other regions of the land. But yeah, Bastion and stuff are real short. Probably would have done it in like six episodes sort of thing. This, on the other hand, is taking a long time. So we got Hollow Root for Sir Gilman. Find something of value. Uh, alright, let's do that. Why not? At Tizo's behest, you explore the rolling hills of Bloomingpool. However, the search proves fruitless, and you see little reason to keep at it. 
He's like, Fears, he disappointed you through this misguided search. You exchange some words of consolation as you head back to the Black Wagon, where you should still have time to pursue your vocations. Alright, let's power up someone. There's only two. Um, I feel like Tizo is going to be the best in the final right, so let's max him out if we can. Tizo is more than pleased to hear you tell him of the rights. Tizo gains a somewhat stronger grasp of how better to pass the Celestial Orb through strength of will and trust in one's triumvirate than through dexterity alone. He nods in understanding. Nice! Rank 4. Tizo gives thanks to Hoob the Swallow for watching over and protecting him. Alright, what do we get? After his employed ability returns faster, that's good. Extra 10 damage. Okay. Let's take that one. The employed ability is his best thing, really. Tizo expresses fascination with the stars and their relation to the rites. Cool. Continue our journey. The Ridge of Goal. I feel mean taking on the fate again because they're the easiest out of the three lots to take out. But we gotta make sure we win, right? That's what matters most, right? Hey guys, where's your friend? You know, the big one with the horns. Likes frowning, stuff like that. Something happened there or what? Bit a crazy story, she just flew on out of here or something. Anyways. Um I don't really want anything that you've got, to be honest. What do these do? Unlearn masteries and choose again. Meh. Maybe these would be useful? I can't afford them. That's unfortunate. Oh, that's headwinds. We can sell that. This headwind ain't here no more. Uh, what else we got? I could probably sell this one too. I don't really have any intention of using him again. Plus one quickness, let's take that. Yeah, let's sell this. And get this one. See you guys again sometime soon, maybe. Okay, because I gotta say, you're my favorite customers I had all week. For sure. Let's commence. After making all the necessary preparations amid the lush overgrowth of the Ridge of Goal, you and your companions await the commencement of the rites. It is quieter even than usual on the onset of such events. The Lone Minstrel appears bearing some sort of news. I have checked and it appears as though the fate have not yet arrived, Rita Sir. There is no sign of Delbert or anyone. Their sigil is not set either. If what he says is true and your adversaries are not present, then you presume the rite cannot commence. However, the stars themselves soon indicate you are mistaken. Well, fuck, who are we taking on then if they're not here? Fuck it. Shouldn't have picked the easiest one, should I? I done fucked up. Probably would have happened either way, but still. Is it Aurelic? Because that won't be until the Liberation Road, surely. Who could it be then? Reader. The Commonwealth. Your own. Today, it is aflame. Much like a stack of books. The flame because of you because of your outlandish plan not that you care not that you shall live to see this place again your attempts at revolution shan't succeed though by all means keep trying as for myself I shall enjoy presiding over these remaining rites what is that pyre there's the writer set to commence, but your adversaries they failed to show. Tizo wonders if the fate decided not to show, knowing that they would not have another chance at the Liberation Room. Indeed, as the rites are drawing to a close, some of the triumvirates whom you have met, perhaps they begin to decide the stars are not worth heeding any longer. Delbert, you wonder whether he would give up on the rites like that. He seems far too devoted to the scribes and too dedicated to his son to have turned back now. In any case, we have begun the ceremony here and so, I ask that we end it. Okay. Go on then. Can we power up Tizo's talisman? 
level 17. 20. There we go. Minus 100% stamina. That's good, man. Gilman. Sir Gilman. Bertrude. And Tizo. Tizo. Fine. Tizo seems rather melancholy about having to conduct a right against no adversary. There will be an adversary, I don't doubt that. Lo, even your adversaries have abandoned you. And it is done. The night wings prevail. By default. What the fuck was that? Not that their adversaries even care. Okay. A contest against no adversary is not a contest at all. Boundless are the teachings of the scribes. No XP. Now go and wallow in the downside for a while. Okay. Well, that was easy. The next one's not going to be though. It's Aurelix group, isn't it? No one speaks further of the fate back at the Black Wagon. Everyone is instead preoccupied with the right that is to come. Tizo can scarce believe this is to be the final opportunity to liberate one of your own. I'm afraid so. Our plan is an imperfect one, yet here we are, faced with this vital opportunity. He looks over to you. Reader, my boy, please go see for yourself. I think we all know where we are headed next, and I suspect I know whom we shall face when we arrive. The others turn to you as well. You turn toward the wagon's door. You know what you shall see out there. Now, however, the time has come to face it. The dim and fading light of the final star still pierces through the darkness, demanding your attention, guiding you towards the end point of your path. Here we go. I guess we'll finish it up now then. It's going to be a long episode if we do, but... There's only one more right to conduct, we might as well just do it. Otherwise the next episode is going to be real short. Let's do it. You are summoned to the Fall of Salome for your seventh and final liberation rite. Thus shall the cycle of the rites be ended for an age. You sense that if the rites shall ever commence again, it shall be not be during your lifetime, or that of any of your companions, even the longest lived ones. The stars reveal to you one more thing. The adversaries whom you face shall be Aurelic. Already he has crossed Scribes Gate and awaits your arrival. If the eight scribes created the Nightwings in their own likeness, perhaps it is only fitting that the Nightwings should in the end be forced to face themselves. Aurelic! Curse this damnable cycle. That it must pit us against him in this, our final chance. Let us retire for the night. We shall not have many chances more for rest before our journey's ended. The group disperses as exhaustion sets in. At dawn, you fly to Mount Elodial to make final effort to achieve your plan and get somebody home. But who? Right. I don't know what I came in here for. To be honest. Oh yeah, percent. 87%. That's not bad. That's not bad. If we win this one, we could just about 100% it. Foolish reader. Your so-called friends. You are accomplice to their hateful plot. They are exploiting you. You shall never have your freedom. I know that. I don't care about our freedom. But they're getting theirs. By dawn, you're already up and about. After a troubled slumber, the Black Wagon is prepared for its final voyage to the Fall of Salam. No one speaks. Let's go. As you lift into the skies, the low minstrel raises his voice, cutting through the somber mood. Reader, a certain olden ballad comes to mind just now. I think it may befit the circumstance. Perhaps it may help pass the time along our flight. Would you mind it very much if we were to play this song for the Nightwings? By all means. You urge the low minstrel to play his ballad so that all among you might hear it. He begins without another word. When the stars align, the rights shall come to bear. Illuminate the signs, the exile shall be there. All are not the same, but 
You touch down amid the sublime grandeur of Mount Elodial to make pilgrimage to the summit for one last time. There, one last liberation rite shall soon commence. There, one last exile shall regain his or her freedom. All others shall remain to carry out their sentences here in the downside for the remainder of their lives. And in the Commonwealth, the plan of which you are a part shall either come to fruition or shall be suppressed. Alright, here we go. After having landed, you join Sir Gilman on an expedition to the monument of Yomio Menimane for what is likely to be the final time. This knight's quest is drawing to a close and yet he often feels no closer to an understanding of true honour. Here he is on the verge of his good companion's final opportunity at freedom and he thinks only for himself. But nay, his thoughts are very much with them, for it is thanks only to them and also to you good scribes that this knight is even here. Then this knight's final quest is to see one of his good friends go free this one last time. That matters more to him even than honour. Soon he is finished, you return to the wagon in silence, feeling as though your mere mini main has shown you favour. At dawn you should begin your last ascent, for now your vocations may occupy what little time you have to spare. I think we should do... Uh, global bonuses for the next right. we need as much help as we can get. I've never done this before. You find a relatively quiet clearing to study the Book of Rites with undivided attention. Though a greater understanding comes at the reader's influence. Oh. Is it permanent boost? I didn't know that. Oh, we could have like... Oh, wow. There's so much we could have done. Quickness. You concentrate on your knowledge of the eight scribes and how together they composed the Book of Rites among their many feats. Inspiration comes to you in a flash, whether from the book or from within, you cannot tell. Reader's influence, serility, celerity. Oh, so it's permanent? Fuck, I would have done that more if I'd known it was permanent. Wouldn't have bothered with vocations. Well, shit. Oh well, we're gonna have to work with what we've got. Man, we can't afford to lose this one. This is huge. Here in the splendors of Mount Elodio, you encounter a messenger imp that delivers news and rumors from the other side. The news this time pertains to Jadariel, who you liberated at the fall of Salome. You learn Jadariel's past transgressions have all been forgiven. She soon was to be reinstated on the blood border, on the presumption that she wanted her old status back. In fact, she was offered an especially prestigious leadership position in the First Vale, for a demon such as she could not be seen in the streets. But she refused the gesture rather bluntly, the report suggests. Instead, she sought Volfred's agents, as well as several of her former fostered sons and daughters, and so the ranks of the re revolution grow stronger. The last part of the message is imp news. Must have been damaged in transit, although it appears to be in Jadariel's own words. All you can tell is that it says, await. You thank the messenger imp for relaying this information. Your companions are excited to discuss the news. We can envision it, a demon such as she set loose within the Commonwealth. She is an inspiration to us all, or to this knight she is at least. Having someone of Jodariel's will and stature with us on the other side shall pave the way towards a brighter future. Tizel's fired up about the news of Jodariel's return to the Commonwealth. The news of Jodariel's liberation fills you and your fellow exiles with newfound resolve. Plus one hope. Here we go. This is terrifying. You stand before Scribe's Gate with your companions. The Gate Guardian is there as ever, but you sense something different in her. The Exiles of the Nightwings. We shall not meet again after the coming ride. Tariq and I, it shall be time we take our rest, I think. Greetings, Celeste. I will tell you that the Nightwings are prepared, though this time I am uncertain anyone among us feels thus. We have a duty to uphold Tariq. And then what, Celeste? And then nothing. Not for the rites or us. Not till the dawn of a new age. Now, Nightwing, step forward. Please state your names and what it is you seek whilst crossing Scribe's Gate. One by one, your fellow exiles approach her, now with sureness in their step. If I may, my name is Volfred Sanderwood. I long as yet to see an age where freedom is one's birthright, and no longer are good people such as these forced to contend for it. Sir Gilman of the Sea Dominion at your service, this knight's never-ending quest for honour shan't end here. Yet first, he has a noble duty to uphold. We are called Big Bertrand. We seek to fulfill our plan of Sandalwood. 
but we are fond of him and his beliefs, and then to go about our business. Tizo believes his ancestors are watching over the Nightwings and seeks to live up to their legacy. Finally, you step forth once more. You, a common wanderer who vowed to help his friends be free again and who managed to come this far within the group. The Gate Guardian observes you for a moment, then motions past the archway towards the summit. The eight scribes bid the Nightwings welcome. Go forth with glory. Except for you, Tariq. You stay right there. I thought you said... The rites are not yet ended, Tariq. He looks to her, then over to the rest of you. Pardon me, everyone. I shall be there when the stars align. The Gate Guardian and the Lone Minstrel remain together as the rest of you depart. Here we go. Man, we gotta win this. We have to win this. And get Gilman free. You've gained the summit of Mount Elodial for the seventh time. The final time in which any of you shall have a chance to leave the downside. <laughs>